Hey, we ready? All right. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Everybody's filling up on uh, caffeine. That's very good. You're going to need that. So good to see Pastor Richie. Good to see you, brother. Man, believe in God for great things. And throughout all the campuses, it's going to be wonderful. Even the campus at New Dort. Oh, it's going to be wonderful, Dennis. Hear what God is doing there. It's absolutely incredible. Good to have you back, man. I won't go over there. I won't touch you this session. I touched him last session. He left, and all of a sudden, things started happening. So I'm going to stay away from that side of the table. All right, I'm good. So when you walked in today, you should have received this packet. You should have received it. Make sure you put your name on it, OK? Because someone's going to try to take it from you. All right, and so this is wonderful because as we witnessed last night, what was it, Pastor Ron, with 30 individuals? 30 individuals about water baptized? And I was explaining a little bit earlier, what good is it if someone gets in the tank and gets wet, but never understand how to fully live for God? And so part of first steps, now listen, let me just be really, really clear so that way we're all on the same page when we get on out of here. Please, if someone asks you the question, what is first steps? Do not say it's for new believers. You, the moment you say it's for new believers, you just jacked up all of our credibility. It's for all believers. No matter how long you've been in church, no matter, I, I don't care if you grew up in church, there are people that come through the doors of the church but never crack open the Bible. So this is an opportunity. This is how I want you to share it with people. What is first steps? It's an opportunity for you to grow deeper in your walk with God. That's what first steps is. Okay, and so we're going to be going through this seminar. Every person, here's the goal. Every person that, that calls ICC home or a place where they come, I am praying that every person goes through First steps. Every person. This is why it is critical, not that we get you out of the way, but we want you to sort of go through it first. So if there's any questions, thoughts, this, you're literally sitting in the first of the first steps class. Okay? We've been doing a seminar. We did a, a spiritual coaching seminar, and, and it, just absolutely incredible. And, and hopefully, you remember some things from there. You got the book, and you're, you're, I mean, you're ready to go. When people come into the first steps class, remember, typically, because if you've been around church world for some time, people will assume that first steps is for a new believer. Okay, so let, it's going to happen, but it's not going to come from our mouths. But when they walk in, they're going to be nervous. They're going to be nervous. So notice, in the first steps class, we don't do church in rows. We don't stare at the back of people's heads. We do that in a large group setting. Small group, we got to look at each other face to face. And that can sometimes be awkward to someone that is either new to the faith or new to church. So this is why we're going to have different components of the first steps class. So when you walk into a first steps class, you're going to have first a facilitator. Notice I said facilitator, not teacher. Okay? A facilitator is the person that's going to be standing in the front of that class and facilitating the information to the student or to the person that's going through the class. We're all going to facilitate the same exact information. So here's what's not going to happen, okay? I don't want the facilitator to all of a sudden be home and all of a sudden they get this like this vision. <laughs> and they're like, we need about four more discussion areas. No, not, not, no. We're going to wait for that, okay? All the information is already here. It's going to be explained. And it's so important that we all hear the same information. So that way, when we're bringing people, 30 or 37 people that just got water baptized, and they're looking to discover, what, how do I follow Jesus? It must be clear. It can't be mumbo jumbo. It's got to be clear and on point. 
And so this first step class is going to help us to do that. So when you walk in as a facilitator, also part of this class will be what's called an administrator. Every first steps class will have someone that takes a record or a roster. You say, why? There's a book in the Bible called Numbers for a reason. <laughs> it's important that we know how many people are going through first steps. Because that's telling us, is our church growing? There are churches, not ICC, there are churches that were open for a year and not one word of baptism. Not one. You couldn't even get your grandma baptized. I mean, not one baptism. That's a problem. But this is telling us also how we must also generate some leaders. We need people to grow in the things of God. So we'll have an administrator for each class. By the way, it's volunteers. Volunteers, people that have the gift to serve in administration. So if that's going to be a desire, we're going to talk about that a little bit later today, and hopefully we'll get some administrators. And then part of that is we're going to have coaches. Coaches. That's why we took all these coaches over a period of several seminars, because the coaches will serve at the round table. So when people come in, they're sitting around the table with people that know what they're talking about. Because within this class, you're going to see as we go through it, there's going to be components of discussion, and it's going to be really important. If you're walking in here and you go, oh, Pastor Ron, I went through the first steps thing with Pastor Jamel. Like, remember, I went there. Yeah, we're trying to, okay, that's great. But the goal is not that you just go through it. Who's going through it with you? And so you're going to be helping people along this spiritual journey. So welcome. So we're going to have table coaches. There'll be elements of where you're going to be talking and the, and the facilitator, you're going to see myself go, hey, turn to your table coach and let's gather some discussion around this question. So we're going to need table coaches. This is why it's important. These spiritual coaches, you're going to be a part of this. And then also part of that is, is hospitality. We want people to come to the, the, the class or whenever we do first steps. I mean, a water goes a long way. A coffee goes a long way. It's saying stay a while. We like you. We've been welcome. We, 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 we've been waiting for you. And so if you don't have the gift of hospitality, you don't touch the table. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> we want people operating in their gifts. You know what I'm saying? It's like Thanksgiving. If you don't know how to cook, just make sure you have the ministry of eating. Eating, <laughs> eating, eating. Oh, it's going to be a great day. All right, so everyone receive one of these packets, right? So you put your name on it. Here we go. In first steps class, the class is typically 50 to 60 minutes long. Okay? No revivals. Okay? No revivals. 50 to 60 minutes long each session. Okay? Each class is four weeks. After we're done with the first steps class, you're like, what happens to the first steps class? Does it go away? No. The first steps class will be continually throughout the year. You say, why? Because we're expecting more people to get saved and come to church, which is awesome. Okay, so if you missed it, it's not like, you, you know, I'm, oh my goodness, I'm done forever. No, it will be back around again. And every class will go over two attributes per session. How many attributes are there? Okay. So part of one of those classes, we will go over like a bonus attribute. Okay. So session one. Here we go. Learn to be with Jesus. You can hit that next slide. Keep going. So this is a time where the facilitator would just welcome everybody to the group. Hey, welcome to ICC. We are so excited to be with you. Now notice, notice the facilitator can't be like, welcome to ICC. We're so glad that you're here. Like, like that facilitator got a kind of, you know, a little bit of energy, like a little bit. You're like, well, I really don't. Then we're going to put you on administration. No problem. No problem. No problem. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, congrats. This is a major first step that you and I have taken in learning to follow Jesus. I'm so excited to be with you. This is going to be a class over the next four weeks. I guarantee you this, that you're going to grow in your relationship with God. 
And the people that are around your table are going to help you grow and mature in the things of God. Next slide. So we're doing a little bit of introduction. So here's where I would say my name first, as you can see on the paper here. My first steps facilitator's names are or is. It's good that people know your name. Hey, my name is Jamel Mayo. Uh, I've been attending ICC for whatever, whatever, and I'm really excited to be here. It's good to let them know. This is where also my table coaches' names are. So if they have table coaches around, they would just say, um, uh, I will introduce them. So I, I, I would, you know, it would go something like this. Hey, Pastor Ron is one of our table coaches this, this morning. You're going to get a chance to get to know him. And I'll go around the tables introducing all of our table coaches so that way people that are taking a class, they know who these people are that they're sitting next to for the next four weeks. Okay, so that's really, really important that we give the introduction. We make sure that every person in the class has a first steps booklet. That's really important. Okay, every person will get one of these booklets. Then there will be a Bible. Some people download the Bible app or whatever, or a physical Bible. It doesn't matter, but they need to make sure that they have these. Um, and so part of the promotion will be, hey, make sure you have your Bible and one of these first steps books, okay? This is an, a bonus option. It's called a decision card. Here's why this is really important, because most some people that may come to a first steps class may not have an active relationship with Jesus yet. But when they get out of First Steps class, they will have an active relationship with Jesus. All right? Because this is really, 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 really important. All right? Yes. Absolutely. We'll have Bibles. Oh, awesome. Overview. Next slide. Yeah. Good question. Yes. The First Steps book, where would the coach be providing the book or they have been their book? Yeah. How would they get the First Steps book? Pastor Ron, how would they get the First Steps book? When they come to the class. And, and the coaches provide it to them? Yes. Is that all right, brother? Miguel, is that all right? Okay, we're good. You just made me really hot. <laughs> overview. So I will tell people, hey, the overview of this, the, today's class, we're going to get to know one another. How do I become a follower of Jesus? What does following Jesus look like? What does a follower of Jesus do? And how does the church help you follow Jesus? So these are will be our overview of our first week's class. All right? Now watch how this works. Okay? The facilitator does not dominate the conversation. Conversation happens in circles. So here we go. Are you ready? Next slide. Here's our table discussion. Where were you born and raised? It's nice to know that. Second question, how did you hear about ICC? All right, so take about three minutes. I know who you are. <laughs> take about three, three, four minutes, all right, with the person next to you. Just let them know where you were born, where were you were raised, and how did you hear about ICC? Ready? Go.
Sashi. Yeah. So typically, that was a great question. Typically, depending on the group dynamic, some people may choose to talk to the person right next to them. Some people may choose to talk to the other person next to them. Or sometimes the room dynamic can be smaller in number. So typically, when you're doing a first steps class, typically it's not this large. Okay, so the volume doesn't go up that high. But so typically, so and also, sometimes you can snoop in other people's conversations. <laughs> hey, oh my goodness, you from Puerto Rico too? <laughs> How long you been there? Oh, rude. Okay, rude. No, but you can, you know, find out the dynamic of your, of your, your, you know, your table, whether you get to know the person right next to you or across from you. Doesn't really matter. There's no rules, but let it just be kind of authentic, uh, uh, you know, but it, it was great. I, it was absolutely awesome. Okay, so that's the feel of how I'm, see how the facilitator has to command the room back because he's on a time constraint. We got about 50 minutes, right? So we, we kind of know this. We're just wetting the appetite a little bit, all right? Next, next, uh, next slide. Right, so here's another question. I would say, hey, just can discuss for a moment who or what or who influenced you to become a follower of Jesus? You may, you may come across an individual at the table right now. That's why spiritual coaches, you've got to be like listening. They may go, oh, I, don't, I don't really have a, a relationship. And I'm all over it. I'm so glad you said that. Because listen, it's really simple. When I first, see how that happens? Mm -hmm. You're helping people along the journey. All right? And so that's why that, some kind of decision card or that, getting that person's name, hey, we want to follow up with you. That way we're keeping accurate record of individuals that are coming to Jesus. All right, don't assume that everybody in the room know Jesus. All right, so table coaches, we got to be in tune to the conversation. Next question, or next slide. Okay, here's the teaching. Now I'm the facilitator. I'm getting the room back. There's discussion happening, but now as the facilitator, I'm working through the curriculum to be clear so I don't wait to the end. This book will be homework for the individuals going through your class. You're going to see at the end of my lesson, it's going to say, read pages, da, 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 da. Be ready to talk about it next week. That's why this is important, okay? All right. But for the class, this is the curriculum, all right? You became a follower of Jesus when John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. Oftentimes, I tell my facilitators, facilitators, don't call on people to read in public, okay? Because you never know. Like, some people do not like to read in public. So you never want to cause anxiety in your room or anxiety in your class, all right? Um, so if you feel like a liberty and you're getting to know the people, you can say, who, um, hey, who can read John chapter 1, verse 12 right on the screen for me? Can someone read that for me? Can you someone see how that goes? And then you're like, I have an option. I can do it or not. You want to keep them with the power, okay? John chapter 1, verse 12. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he, Jesus, gave the right to become children of God. So we're going to answer the question. You became a follower of Jesus when you receive or invite Jesus into your life, okay? You receive and you invite Jesus into your life. Should say number two. Number two is you believe or trust that Jesus paid for your sins. So if you're going to become a believer, you must first receive Jesus into your life and two, believe and trust Jesus paid for your sins. There are some promises that are attached to this verse. Here are the promises. Next slide. John 1.12 says, Yet to all who received and those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Notice, you have a right to become a children of God. 
I would add something along these lines if I'm coaching my facilitators. I would add, everyone has a right to hear the gospel at least once. Everyone has a right to hear the gospel at least once. So you have a right to become a child of God. Oftentimes people say, well, look how bad I am. Look how dirty I am. You don't understand the things that I've done. The enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He wants people to remain in their sin, in their shame, in their guilt. But because of what Jesus did for us, he gave us a right to become his child. John 3, 16 through 17. Next slide. Right? This is huge. How many of us are searching for belonging? I belong. I finally belong to someone. I belong. I belong. You belong to God. You are his. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's Bible. Other promises. Next slide. This is huge. When people come to First Steps class, you got to know God loves you deeply. He deeply loves you. He gives you eternal life. No more condemnation. Depending on the teacher, depending on your facilitator. I will go a little bit into this condemnation with a story. And I would say, when I first got saved, I knew what condemnation felt like. I felt the weight of my shame and my sin and my guilt. And that's what hindered me oftentimes in my walk with God. It hindered my prayer life. It hindered me from reading the Bible because the enemy reminded me, although I was saved, he reminded me of everything I did wrong and I felt shame. But there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. Amen. Conviction is what leads me to the holiness of God. Amen. Condemnation keeps me away from him. Jesus said, no more. therefore, there is now no condemnation. Amen. All of it is gone. Yeah. And God is saving you. Next page. First steps. Matthew 4.19. Say, what's next? That's why we call it the first steps. Now that we know this, what do we must do? Here it is. Come, Jesus said, follow me. And I will make you, come on now, fishers of men and women. <laughs> Matthew 9, 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Now, if you remember, tax collectors were worse than sinners. They had their own category. That's how bad they were. And no one liked them at all. They were some mean dudes. But watch what Jesus told him. He said, follow me. He told him. Matthew got up and followed him. Notice, it doesn't matter where you came from. God cares more about where you're going. He said, come follow me. Jesus, next slide, Jesus wants to be with you. Jesus wants to be with you. There is no one too dirty in this room that God does not want to be with. Next is now the table discussion. You see the facilitator? All I did was facilitate information. Facilitator then goes into, here's the question. How does it affect you to know that the creator of the universe wants to spend time with you? How does that affect you that you, 
The creator of the universe wants to spend time with you. Take three minutes. Here we go. Now, if you notice, if you notice, if you notice, a couple things, especially my facilitators. When you're facilitating a room, you got to work the room. Okay? Got to work the room. Now, be careful when you work in the room because you get by a guy like Willie, and Willie, like, got that look on him, like, don't come over here. Then don't go over there. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. So to this question and time for table talk. Fill it out. So, so the, as a facilitator, I'm watching the clock. So as a facilitator, I know exactly where I need to be. So if, I'm, if I have more time, I'll give it a little bit more time. And then I'm also, when I'm working the room, I'm seeing where people are at in their conversation to where I kind of know it's coming to an end. So typically about three to four minutes is usually good. I notice the volume of the room change so I work my way back into the middle of the room so I can get everybody's attention. Now, now remember, I'm trying to say, hey, I want to foster the beginning of conversation, but y'all do know y'all can also talk outside of this class. <laughs> right? Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah, 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 get what I'm saying? Um, so so I, would, I, would, I would encourage that as well. So one of the things... One of the things that, 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 I, that I'm, I'm loving what I'm hearing and seeing is there's a good vibe in the room, Amen. right? It's a good yes. vibe in the room. I love this vibe, right? Amen. How does it affect you? So as a facilitator, here, here, I'll just throw like a bomb in the room. Like I just let it all out because I know there's been a lot of individual conversations. So watch this. Watch, watch how this happens. I will go, hey, give me an example. How does it affect you to know that the creator of the universe wants to spend time with you? Anybody got that? How does it affect you? Give me like two words. In one word. Makes you feel special. Wanted. Loved. Appreciated. Humbling. Somebody cares. Loved. Accepted. Honored. Make me feel great. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. What if you're talking to someone who don't know that 
they feel special at yeah. home or have no relationship. Yeah. So it's great when we can shout out all the stuff that yep. because we are part of that. Yep. But what about somebody who doesn't have that relationship? Great question. You know what I got? I got table coaches. <laughs> So, as a facilitator, this is why I'm walking around, because I'm hearing conversations. I'm hearing what's being said around the room, so I feel comfortable enough to throw it out, because I know I'm going to get at least one. And also, coaches, help me. <laughs> help me. Like, like, if you're like, oh, man, my facilitator is dying right now. I loved Hey, there it is, love. Like, you get what I'm saying? Coaches are there to help the conversation along. And so, so that's to help people as well. So, so when I'm walking around, I'm taking notice of that. But that's why I have my table coaches in terms of they're helping to facilitate the activity of God around the table one-on-one. -on -one. And now they feel, well, these people feel love, but I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, so that's why they're in our class. Because they came that way, they ain't going to leave that way. Yeah, that's the goal, though. That's why I need spiritual coaches, right? It can't just be the facilitator in the room trying to lead 4,000 people to Jesus. It's everybody. And so as a spiritual coach, I'm taking note of that. And I'm going to let my facilitator know, hey, I need to follow up with this individual. Amen. We need to pray for this individual. Oh, okay, so great questions, by the way. Next, next one. Okay, attribute number one. Attribute number one. Learning to be with Jesus. This is the first attribute of learning to follow Jesus. I want you here on your paper. Next slide. Circle the words that stand out to you in the verse. Now, watch, now we're helping people do something that they've probably never done before. Not just read the word of God, but the moment you engage your fingers, you're now studying the word of God. Okay? This is important. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, the scripture says, Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's the memory verse, by the way, for attribute number one. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I would encourage them, hey, what, what word jumps off the page at you? And I was, come, okay? Now... You said come? Okay, now what you just did, I get excited. Because what you just did was you allowed the Holy Spirit to illuminate something off that page, and it grabs you. I'm, I'm reading the same thing, and I may miss come. It doesn't mean that come's not important. It just means that God is dealing with me uh, in, a, in a completely different way, but it's all good. For example, um, man, if I'm coming, I'm struggling. The word that's jumping out of me, I'm weary. I'm weary. I'm weary. God's saying, come, come to all. And then he says, who, who, who's coming? He gives the open invitation to all. Every person. You see how we're slowing it down, taking a verse. And well, here's the goal. The principles they're learning in this class is going to stay with them the rest of the week and the rest of the month and the rest of the year. You're helping people to learn how to be with Jesus. Okay, next. Four ways you spend time with Jesus. Four ways. This right here changed my life. When I got to, a chance to understand why am I coming to church? Four ways. Four ways you spend time with Jesus. So if you're saying, if the first attribute is saying uh, to be with Jesus, I'm going to tell you, what is that? I don't know what that is. You as a facilitator, you as spiritual coaches, know how to define what it means to be with Jesus. Here it is, large group. That's why it's important to come to church. It's important to gather with other believers. In my family, in my life, I, I'm just being honest. Coming to church is not an option. 
The moment I go like this in my bed, should I go to church? I'm not going. I don't give Satan an opportunity to play in my mind with my church attendance. Large group. Why? Because Jesus ministered in a large group. Jesus was always talking to the crowds. So in a church setting, large group setting, you can't ask questions. If you came to church on a Sunday, you're like, oh, Pastor Ron, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Dennis will take you out. <laughs> He will take you out. <laughs> what are we going? Yo, yo, man, yo, yo, man, yo, yo, man, I'll be willing. Yo, man, yo, man. Oh, did I get him? Did I get him good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Second, it's small groups, or we call them bridge groups. Okay, notice Jesus spoke to the crowds, but he taught the disciples. See that? He spent time with the disciples. If you're going to spend time with Jesus and all you do is come to church, you're missing three other parts. You're missing three other unique parts to your personal spiritual growth with Jesus. Small group. So that's why you're in a first steps class. And now I will tell my first steps class, give yourselves a hand because you are now in a small group. <laughs> oh my gosh. Small group? I, I didn't know I was in there. I didn't really... It's your bridge groups. Anytime you're meeting with more than one person, you're in a small group. Okay? Jesus had 12 disciples. What is that? A small group. Third, one on one. You see how when you walk with Jesus, the circle gets smaller? Okay, you start wide. Hey, come to church. Hey, come to a small group, bridge group. Oh, hey, 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 one on one. Did you know that our church now have what's called spiritual coaches? That there's someone that can walk with you. Jesus also met with Peter, James, and John. But no, no, no. What's the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal. It's to get them to spend time with the Father alone. So first steps is a great way for them to get started on the journey of following Jesus. Be part of a church. Be part of a bridge group. Get connected in first steps. Get connected with a spiritual coach that's going to help you to spend time alone with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Table discussion. And again, to answer your question, as I'm moving through, I'm watching my time, I may only have time for one question, two questions, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so some of the questions that I will go through is, what will you do to spend time with Jesus? Watch this. Point of question. To what week in service will you be faithful? Don't, don't let them leave class. Well, I don't know. No. Which, which one? You want the 8 o'clock? You want the 10 o'clock? You want the 12 o'clock? You want the one on Friday at 7.30? I mean, we got more. Sir, you give a, I'm, 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 I'm like a walking billboard. How will you prioritize this group? Make it important. When you spend time, when will you spend time alone with Jesus? It helps me to set an appointment. Hey, can you open up your phone right now? Watch. Can you open up your phone right now? And I want you to put in your phone right now an appointment with Jesus at what time? And put the loudest alarm you got on that thing. See how I'm, I'm, I'm helping people around my table? Oh, boy, I got to write an appointment with Jesus, right? So this is what I'm helping people to do. Next slide. As a facilitator, I'm always forecasting what's next. All right, that was week number one. We got three more weeks. Hey, before you leave, make sure by next week, read pages 8 through 17 
in your first steps book. Okay? Notice how I'm giving them spiritual homework. Oh, also, I got some exciting things to go over. You may have people in the class. You may have, I may have some people right here, right now. We already have the next water baptism date. The next class is February 15th, 2023. Oh, there's a, there's a thought planning ahead. February 15th at 7 p.m. is the class. Then we'll tell them, when do bridge groups start? Remember, we want them in a bridge group. I have a very unselfish plug yes. for bridge groups. I think, especially in this, in this first steps, it's going to be really important that instead of saying, hey, come join this group, you say, hey, you know what? We're having a group of ladies together Boom. next Friday. Why don't you come? Yes. Because I think. I want to go. I, I, I'll go. I want to go to that. What you just said. <laughs> overwhelming, overwhelming anybody from the beginning to join a group. Yes. When they're just brand new, it's going to be a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm new to a church and I see it in a large group, like join a group, I may make note of it, but I want a personal invitation. The personal touch goes a long way. Perfect example. Okay? And then, you're the first to know about this, by the way. We want people to recognize this, even in first steps. Watch this. Here's how I'm going to put it You were made for more. You were made for more. You have gifts that are not even discovered yet. And God doesn't just have a plan and a purpose for your life, but he's given every person a purpose and gifts to be used for his glory. Hey, listen, I want you to write down a date. I really do want you to write down this date. February 18th from 9 to 12, we're going to have a seminar just like this, but it's going to focus on spiritual gifts. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, we may need a whole nother church building to host the amount of people that's going to come to that. Uh, but we want, see what I'm doing? I'm forecasting for them. I'm forecasting for them. And so right in the class, I'm already promoting activities that we have to help them to grow in their walk with Jesus. Any questions? That was week one. Are bridge groups ongoing, or is it like, would bridge groups be kind of like set up in small parts? Bridge groups? Between Pastor Ron, bridge groups, are they ongoing, or it's like if you miss it, you miss it forever? They're ongoing. <laughs> They're ongoing? They're ongoing? Just so you know, Pastor Ron, on January the 8th, Sunday, is going to be launching the journey of following Jesus. He's going to be doing an entire preaching series on Sunday morning large group, but then in your bridge groups, in marriage, they're going to be taking their group through the book, and they're going to be going through it all together. Now, we may get people that say from our First Steps class that go, oh, man, I, 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 I missed it. I, it's okay. This ain't going anywhere. We're going to help people grow in their walk with Jesus. So when you come to church on that Sunday, January the 8th, you're going to hear Pastor Ron get into week number one, or probably the overview of this, preaching through all the attributes. And then by that time, we'll have our first steps class ready to go. We'll have our bridge groups ready to go. The campuses are ready to go. Everybody will be moving for our young people. Pastor Sam, Sammy? We'll be ready to go. Everyone's going to be going in the same direction. Amen. It's incredible. Yes. All right? So that's week, that's, that's week number one. Yes, Pastor Ron? Okay. Uh, I, my, my, my eye has al it's always one eye on the pastor at all times. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Okay. Moving on. So page number eight. It goes
goes right back through it. Here we go. Week two, next slide. Introduction, once again, there'll be some table connection time in this class. They'll be building a solid foundation. Oh, and by the way, if people like, like miss the class, like, oh my goodness, I missed week one and two, can I just, no. Wait for the next one, okay? It's, it's very important, we don't wanna miss anything. All right, this is why we have it going on, on, and on. It's okay. Just wait until that class is coming back around again. So we want to make sure that that roster stays clean, all right? Amen. Table connection. Building a solid foundation. Overview of hearing and healing. And then we're going to provide some application to it. All right? Here we go. Table discussion. Right at the beginning of the class. I may give about three minutes of this. Hey, what was the highlight of your week? See how I'm giving people opportunity to just talk. Oh, I had a long week. Now watch, my table coaches, this is where you start your prayer thing. Oh, I had a hard week. I had to go blah, 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 blah. And they're giving information. That's called free information into their life. Don't forget people's names and what they go through. Amen. Hey, how can I reach out? Remember her? Guy with guy, ladies with ladies. Hey, hey, uh, is it okay if I reach out to you this week? Always ask for permission. Hey, is it okay? What's the best way to reach you? What's the best time to reach you? Ask these questions. That way you don't feel like, you know, overburdened. And then some people, like my sister said, may just be like, okay, no problem. I won't reach out. I'm just glad you're here. It's okay. No problem. Not a problem. But I want people to know that they are cared for. That's the goal. All right? All right, here we go. So let's say we made it through that conversation. Laying a solid foundation. Anybody see a problem with this? You ever see this leaning tower? I thought they actually built it on purpose like that. <laughs> they were drinking wine. <laughs> probably, they're in Italy, they probably were. The foundation. The foundation. When our foundation is off, you can be growing, but growing in the wrong direction. We want to be growing in the right direction. That's why the foundation, this first steps class is critical to help you to grow in your relationship with Jesus. Next slide. Matthew 6, 4, 47. I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, not if, when the flood came, the torrent struck that house, but it could not shake it because it was well built. Let's look at some essentials of a firm foundation. Some essentials. Coming to Christ. Coming to him. Not just coming to Jesus, but part of coming to Jesus is hearing or listening to his word. Helps us to dig down deep on our foundation. But what good is hearing, but we don't do it? Part of that scripture verse tells us not just come to Jesus, not just hear what he has to say, although it's awesome, but we must put it into practice. We must do what the word of God tells us to do. Next page. You're going to be hearing throughout this class and from our, our senior pastor, Pastor Ron, you've been hearing something called seven attributes of following Jesus. This is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So notice, it's going to keep the same pattern of coming, hearing, and doing. Every attribute is geared towards coming, hearing or listening, and actually doing. Last week, we went over attribute number one, learning to be with Jesus. This week, we're going over attribute number two, learning to listen. And then we're going also going over today attribute number three, which is learning to heal. 
learning to heal. So coming, hearing, and doing. Table discussion. Question number one. How did it go with your time with Jesus? In this room, I'm going to rephrase that question. In this room for today, I want you to talk just for a moment. When is the time you meet with Jesus? When is the time you meet with Jesus? Is there a specific time? What works best for you? Now, now hear me. Hear me out real quick. Everybody's different. We're not getting kind of like, 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 relig you know, all this religious spirit. Okay, if you want to meet with them in the middle of the night, go for it. I won't be with you. <laughs> According to scripture, though, Jesus, if he spent time with the Father, the scripture says in the book of Mark that he got up early while it was still dark out. Okay? Because he knew that if he blew by his morning, the disciples and everybody was going to be looking for him. And so Jesus knew he felt his, he was fresh in the morning. I don't know the jobs that you're walking into. But before I meet with people, I got to meet with Jesus. And so, again, I'm helping people. Like, wow, oh, I, didn't, I never, never thought that. Is that why my day goes so wrong? Could be. What is the time of day do you personally like, like to spend time with Jesus? Take a couple minutes. Just for you. All right, everybody. All right. Wonderful. So here's the beautiful thing. The beautiful thing about these groups and about these questions is we're helping people to engage in spiritual matters. 
oftentimes throughout the week, how many, how many, how many moments do they get to share about when they spend time with Jesus? When people go to the mall, they're going to buy clothes and purchase some different things. When people go to the supermarket, they're going to buy food. When people come to church, I think it's great we talk about all that, but if we're not talking about Jesus, we, we got an issue. So the wonderful thing is that we're around the table speaking about a spiritual component that is going to help us grow in, in a great way. And so I'm hoping that one of the things that I oftentimes do, I love talking to people about their private time with Jesus because I want to also glean from other people's personal time. Some people like the journal. Some people like to maybe listen to a little bit of quiet, quiet music. Some people pray out loud. Some people walk and pray. Some people have a spot where they go to in their home uh, where, where they're, they're free from kids. Come on, somebody, in Jesus' name. Uh, so <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, one of the most challenging, one of the most challenging times in my walk with Jesus was, was having a newborn. It was, it was like one of, one of the most challenging times. Uh, uh, I'm not going to get too personal, but I was so glad that, let's just put it this way, I was so glad that my kids uh, 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 did not want to do the whole formula thing. Because you know why? It took me right out of the component. I said, go to your mama. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Honey, honey, but I had to change all the diapers, so that didn't work out that well. So, but honestly, find out when you're fresh. So I'm, I'm learning as I'm kind of getting older. Um, there are no rules to your personal time. If you need to go for a walk, go for a walk. Like, like go for a walk. Sometimes you pray better outside, man. Wherever. Where, wherever you got to go, just go, okay? Um, one of the things that, that have helped me to understand myself is I know when I'm in red mode, yellow mode, or green mode, okay? Like there are some times where I feel like my prayers are just hitting the ceiling. Oh, that's the, like the worst. I'm like, God, are you like not there? And so I'm like, what? Well, well, sometimes I just need a little nap. Amen. Anybody believe in the ministry of a nap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus, come rock me to sleep. Rock me to sleep. I wake up from that nap. I'm like, all right, Jesus, we're ready to go again. But just know, know when you're on, know when you're off, know when the best time, you know what I'm saying? When you're, when you're thinking clearly. Okay, that's a whole other thing. Okay, do a little bonus thing. Next one. So attribute number two. Obviously, we're going to be talking about learning to listen, hearing the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Hearing. Next slide. Hearing and understanding Jesus' words and doing what he says. Hearing means that you're hearing or listening and understanding Jesus' words in order to do what he's asking you to do. Hearing God's word. Next one. Here's the process that we're trying to get everyone to be aware of when they're, because the Bible can be so intimidated sometimes but we call this, you're observing what the scripture says. What does it say? You can't find out what it means if it's not saying what it's saying. So what does it say? What does it mean? That's giving understanding. And then the application, how can I put this into practice? That's the three processes that when I'm reading God's word, what am I reading? What does it mean? How is God saying it to me? And what is God calling me to do with the information that I have? Okay. Page 11. There's a time for a table discussion. Notice how this class is always about table discussion, okay? 
Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. It's going to break down, observe, understand, and apply. Here it is. Jesus said again, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke or my teaching upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Okay, so the question is, what does it say? Okay, so I give, like, like for example, I'll give table, table time. And you would write down, well, what does it say? Well, it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay? Then secondly, hit the next slide. Is that the next slide? No. Go back. Keep it right there. That's okay. What does it mean? What does it mean? Okay, so during your table discussion, you will go over not only what is Jesus saying, but what does it mean? Okay, so here, here's, here's a couple conversational points. He's saying... Come to him. He's given us an open invitation to come to him. Why is Jesus telling us to come to him? Who is he telling to come to him? All of us. Even those that are weary and burnt out. He's saying, come to me. Jesus is the solution for everything that we need. And he gives us this wonderful invitation to come to him. And then he's reminding us that he is gentle with us. He doesn't knock us over the head. That when we come to him, we can actually rest in him. We serve a God that knows everything about us already. So we can come to him. With everything that we are, with who we are, we can come to him. So the question is, not only what does it mean... But how can I put it into practice? This week, how can we put this into practice? Now we'll give a little discussion, a little table talk. Oh, one of the ways I can, I can come to him. I didn't know that I could come to him. Can I come to him and my mom is dealing with some situations right now? Yes. Can I come to him when I feel like I'm walking through the valley and I feel like I'm all alone? Yes. Did you hear all the testimonies last night? People going through it. But Jesus says what? Come to me. Come to me. Four contexts. Four contexts of learning to hear Jesus. Here's some application. What could you do to increase hearing at a weekend service? Practical now. Take notes. Helps you to engage with the message. Okay? Here's another thing. Decide your activity on Saturday night so that you'll be ready for Sunday morning. Remove distractions. Here's a, here's a practical thing. Go to bed early. Go to bed early. Here's another one. Here's another one. Eat something in the morning. A little gentle breakfast. A little gentle. I'm not talking about a full course thing. But get something in your tummy before you come to church. Here's another one. Get there early. <laughs> get there early. All week long. We've been trying to get to our jobs. Oh, my boss going to kill me. He's going to kill me if I get to this job. But when it comes to church, we're like, oh, I can be late for Jesus. I can, he'll kind of, whatever. I'll get there when I get there. 
And then you come in and you're so razzled. So by the time worship is over, you got to hear the word. You're like, I didn't get anything out of it. Well, because you weren't settled. So decide Saturday night, Lord, help me to be settled. Kids, listen, I'm putting out all your clothes and I'm making sure that it matches. I got five of them things. I know how it is. Everybody, don't go back in your cup. No, lay out the stuff. You're making preparation so that way in Sunday you're settled to start to hear from Jesus. Number two, what could you do to increase hearing in a small group or in one of your bridge groups? Reading the scriptures and saying, God, help me to apply it. What could you do to increase hearing with a coach? Get a spiritual coach. Right? That's one of the things that we're offering here. Spiritual coaches will help us to learn how to hear from Jesus. Then number four, what could you do to increase hearing in your quiet time? Now, there are a couple examples. One, this is why we're going through our first steps. So when you meet with Jesus this week and you go over your first steps, this is one way that you can hear from Jesus. Because it's filled with scripture verses. The second way is download the Bible app. It's awesome. But they may not know how to do it. So table coaches find out how to go in the app store, put the U version or hit that little thing, and then an amazing thing happens. The Bible will start coming up. You download it, and then watch. As they're navigating it, there's so many different reading plans, I mean, out the wazoo. But start small. You're getting people to learn how to spend time with Jesus. Amen? And notice, remember, we're doing two attributes during week two. Two attributes. Attribute no number three, learning to heal. Matthew 4.23. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Ways Jesus heals. There are different ways that we see it in scripture. Prayer and anointing with oil. In James chapter 5, next slide, verse 14 through 15. So, he's praying and anointing with oil. So, we see also spiritual healing, James 5, 16, spiritual healing. We see also Jesus casting out demons. Often we see this. This is part of his ministry. We saw Paul casting out demons. This is, this is part of the spiritual warfare that we're facing. We have power and authority over it all. Why? Because Jesus gave us power and authority. We see in Genesis 128, God will use physicians. Number five. Emotional healing. Emotional healing. If you remember when we went over the uh, coaching seminar, this area right here, especially when you're one-on-one, -on -one, gets extremely emotional. In what areas could you use healing? In what areas could you use healing? As a facilitator, I always start with myself to bring the anxiety in the room down. So I'll just kind of share like a brief, brief maybe situation or story in my life where God used healing. What I, it was in the area of, of forgiveness for my father. That was something I struggled with deeply. And even though I came to Jesus, I didn't realize 
that I was still locked up in bondage to the things that he's done to me. And I had to let Jesus heal me. And it took time. The closer I got to Jesus, the more healing I received. I must allow Jesus to heal me in every area. But I'm so thankful that healing, listen, doctors treat, but Jesus heals. Amen. He heals us so deeply. And we're so thankful to the Lord. Next slide. This is also a good time. This is where I need my spiritual coaches to engage your room. Once we have the healing talk, what areas? Once you identify it, pray with them. And I ask the question always when I'm praying with people, hey, can I pray with you? And the room doesn't need to get loud, but it can just be a simple prayer of saying, God, I'll get their names. Would you heal so-and-so in this area? Typically, when it gets to this point in, in my class, I would actually ask the people to whisper. Just whisper. Take a moment to whisper. You're praying guy with guy, lady with lady. And you're just praying over that individual or with that individual over an area that they just shared openly with you. It demands the attention of detail to pray with that individual. So I would, I would do it like this. I'll model it for you. I usually come closer. I won't. I will come closer. his name there he is with them in the midst Amen. right changes the complete dynamic of your class the person that receives prayer will go oh my goodness I thought only the pastors pray at this church it will be our job to make sure we follow up hey how's it going so the next week in class or during the week hey how's it going with that situation I've been praying for you most people never had people pray for them in a consistent way see how this is it's inviting not just you to follow Jesus but it's inviting you to get dirty with people next slide I'll say alright here we go that was another class Upcoming events, two more weeks. We got two more weeks of class. Please make sure, please make sure don't miss class. It's really important that you come, you give God these last two weeks. We're going to be going over some important information. Oh, for homework, make sure you read First Steps, pages 18 through 23. Don't forget, if you do not know, if you've not yet been water baptized, we're having a class on Feb February 15th at 7 p.m. Whatever bridge groups are at this time, I usually promote bridge groups big time, all right? And then also, something really, really important to discover your gifts, how God wired you. Once again, we got our focus seminar happening February 18th. Remember, I'm always bringing up the same information over and over and over and over again, all right? Because everyone that comes to this guy, we don't want to drop the ball. We want to give people major opportunity to grow in their walk with God. Pastor Ron? We got two more, so don't get all happy. Just a couple of comments I want to make. First of all, when you hear things like this, you can become overwhelmed by it, that I'm not qualified to be a facilitator, or I'm not qualified to be a coach. And, and the enemy begins playing games with, that could never be me. God can use anybody. God's looking for our availability, not our ability. And that's why we're going to grow in these things. Now, a table coach is not a counselor. 
So if you're, you're talking to somebody and they say, you know, I'm being abused, or I'm going, and you say, well, let's let's go. Let's if you if you feel free. Let's go see the pastor and the coach and the person, because sometimes the person is too afraid to come in and talk, but that table coach can bring and break the ice as well. Uh, and so a coach is there to coach, not to be the answer person, not to, to give them the solution to everything, but hey, we're in this thing together. Uh, and so, you know, the enemy will begin to say, man, I can't do that. Uh, so we're going to take a break in a couple of moments, and, and what, I, what we're going to do is I'm going to be over at that table, and there is the four sign-up sheets. So if you feel like God wants you to be a facilitator, not, not say I'm going to throw you in to be a facilitator, because there's other things that have to be done. You've got to be a member. You know, there's different things that have to be done for facilitators uh, and coaches, uh, but we need table coaches. We need administrate people who will keep track of names. You know, what the problem is, is people come into a church, and they go out of a church, and we have no way to follow up. Uh, beginning in January, when someone gives their life to the Lord, they're going to come to the altar. Our altar the workers are going to be trained, how they're going to get their information, and they're going to begin to say, this is when the next first step class is. Now, beginning January 8th, that very same week, we're starting our first first steps class. So we're going to start it on Thursday nights for four weeks, and I'm going to teach the first one. Uh, and then after that, we may take a week off, but then the following week, we're going to go to Sundays during the 12 o'clock service for four weeks because we have children's ministries going on. And so if parents have children, they can bring them to 12 o'clock serv service, let them be in children's church, and for four weeks, there will be a, a facilitator. Now, I won't be teaching that class because I'm, I'll be preaching. Uh, and, and so then we'll go back to Thursday. And then we may need to have more than one class in the church of our size. And this will be happening uh, in the Spanish ministries, Korean ministries, New Door. So this will be an ongoing thing. This is, this is the new direction uh, that we're going in, and, and that's going to be a continual thing. Uh, as Jamel said, that January 8th, and all ministries, all ministries will be teaching it for the first time, just as the kickoff. Then we'll be going to the one-on-one -on -one, uh, and, and the coaching aspect of it. So there'll be more information. Uh, and so this is a, 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 a transition as a church in doing all this. And you just think about, okay, now we get all the names and how that's going to happen. Uh, well, we have, uh, I, I want to introduce, starting in January, our new ministry development coordinator, uh, and that she's going to be uh, uh, contacting you. She's going to be doing, and I'm going to ask Shanika to come up. Shanika is uh, coming on staff as our ministry development uh, coordinator. Uh, she will be over this. She will be taking care of all the administration part of it, contacting you, setting up all the classes, first steps class, all of that. Uh, and so we're just so glad. She is a very talented woman. Uh, she goes on our missions trips. Uh, and, and to have some, uh, some youth and passion and desire, uh, doing the membership class, doing the water baptism, all of the information, keeping it so that we know who everybody is. So, Shanika, we're so glad you're coming on board. You want to say a few words? Oh, yeah. All right. A few words. Hello, everybody. <laughs> all right. So, um, stepping into this position, I'm going to ask that you guys keep me in prayer. It's, it's new. Um, I want to serve my king first. Um, I want to serve you because I think that in doing that, when we get outside of the building too, we can serve those who need to be served as well. So um, let me know how I can serve you. Um, please come alongside me in prayer. Don't hesitate to say, eh, something doesn't feel right or something's not, not okay. I am willing to be held accountable to each and every one of you because you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. So um, can I do a shameless plug real quick? Ministry fair, shameless plug. If you have, we are having a ministry fair in January as well. He's kicking it off um, and on January the eighth. That following weekend, that Friday and Saturday. If you are a ministry leader and you did not receive an email from me, please touch base with me sometime today or um, this week so I can give you information. How many of you enjoyed last night being together as one body? Yeah. 
So my heart for the ministry fair is Friday night we're kicking it off. We're going to have all campuses worshiping together. Pastor Kelly's going to be there as a representative for the Korean ministry. Um, Pastor Richie's going to be there. And we are going to worship together. Pastor Eric, Spanish and English. Um, we're going to have a blast and we're going to come down each ministry um, leader will have a table set up. This is the opportunity to get people who are not in this room to sign up for one ministry one time over the course of three months. So this is your time to um, exhibit your ministry per se, but then also plug in because like Jermel was saying, we take for granted, hey, go see Kathy, go see, you know, Precious. People don't know who we are. So let's open up our hearts and our times and our ministry so that way we can bring them in and... Uh, Okay, that was the end of my plug. Thank you. <laughs> See, God wants us to be servants. He wants us to be involved, and so that's what that's all about. We have a great opportunity to serve this coming week. On Thursday, in this room, we will be serving over 300 uh, people a Thanksgiving meal. Uh, and and when, when the city and, and people invite us to be a part of that, so it's going to be a great day. It's not just feeding. that you know Because they say, well, you can bring the food down to the hotels. I said, no, we're not bringing the food down to the hotels. We want them here so they can hear prayer. They can hear a message. Uh, we're going to have a, a room filled with supplies that they can pick up. We had someone donate 100 toys that we're going to get brand new toys that we're going going to give out that day. Uh, they're going to have ministry. The prayer teams are going to be here. Uh, and we have bus drivers. going. But we need to have a, a, a short volunteer meeting because we I know I have about 70 from the central campus alone. Uh, and so on Tuesday night from 7 to 8, we're going to have a short meeting. How this is going to work? and Because it has to be organized uh, how we get them in, how we get them through, the feeding, the serving, the ministry, who's praying, who's driving in vans and and so uh, and I thank God for Lindsay and and the campus pastors and all that who've been uh, uh, leading this it's going to be a great day God has called us for such a time as this so if you signed up Tuesday I'll be getting announcing it again tomorrow a short meeting and then Thursday we're here all day some of these can come uh, sometimes some of these come one time and but we need people from eight till about four o'clock in the afternoon so it's it's a blessing Jesus is called us to reach the city and to touch the world for Jesus. Amen. I, I'm again so thankful for uh, Jamal. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. We're going to take a special love offering. Uh, he, he's a busy man. He's made time to come week after week for our training. Uh, and so if you, uh, there's some envelopes on the table if you like to give. If you're making out a check, make it out to ICC. Uh, also, you can go online and give there. Go to the webpage or the uh, text to give and go down to ICC Central, guest speaker. So let's pray. And then we're going to take a short break and you can come over to the table. Father, we thank you, Lord, today for all that you're doing in our lives. Father, I thank you, O oh God, that you are training us to be better disciple makers. Father, I thank you for Jamal and his heart and his passion for reaching and teaching and, and leading people to you. I thank you for his friendship. And now, Lord, I pray you bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name. Amen. So after you they give, you can take about 10, 15 minute break, and I'll be over at the table as well. Roll through the rest of our material. So we're coming, we're taking our seats. Willie, this was your wife's. She was a blessing. No. You said you sweat too much. I do. It, call, it, it cooled me down real nice. But so good. People are already signing up. And uh, we got some, some great questions. Some great questions in terms of this rollout. And Pastor Ron's going to do a phenomenal job. Obviously, he co-authored the book. Your church is going to be extremely blessed. As we roll this out January 8th, here's the beautiful thing about it. Because we're already ahead of the game. We're already expecting that people are going to want to know, what does it mean to follow Jesus? And we have now multiplied the number of coaches and facilitators that are going to help people move forward in their walk with God. And so as Pastor Ron talked about it, we are encouraging departments. 
Man, go through it with your people. Come January 8th, as he rolls out each, each attribute, it's going to be an opportunity for you to, man, lead people that you are already have influence with. So it's going to be absolutely incredible. Okay, where do we leave off? 14. 14. All right, session number three. Now, remember, we got two, so we, would say, we got two more classes. This class for session three, they went home. Remember, there was another question. They did their homework. The homeworks are in these first step books. All right, that's why it's important that they get them. Yep. Yes, yes. So every, every class will have also the PowerPoint. So it has already all the information. You don't got to make up anything. It will already be there for you. And then we will update the information, obviously, once February passes. We'll update the information to say the new class or the new focus seminar. So, yep, absolutely. Yep. Great question. All right? Wonderful. Session number three. Learn to influence. Learn to love. Part of following Jesus is that we are now influencers to the kingdom of God. We are influencers. As you notice again, just because we're shorter on time, every class, once again, there's the table discussion. This is why it's important. We need table coaches, spiritual coaches to go through the journey with people. Table discussion. Once again, same thing. What was the highlight of your week? Again, we're giving people an opportunity to talk, to connect. The second question, um, what is one thing you are learning about following Jesus? This is, again, this is feedback. You're getting feedback from them, okay? Um, introduction, once again, table connection, review of the seven attributes. We're going to look at the overview of the two attributes, learning to influence and learning to love, and then there will be some application, all right? So here we go. Let's get into it. Learning to influence. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. Here we go. Jesus said, you are, not, not you were, now that you are a follower of Jesus, you ask Jesus to come into your life, he goes, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. What do you notice? You. You are. Boom. You. You are. You are salt. And you are light. You are salt and you are light. As a follower of Jesus, if people walk with me and they're not thirsty for Jesus, maybe I'm not salt. So part of following Jesus, part of influencing is we want people to say about us, there's something about this person that's different. Amen. Yes. They may not know who it is. They may not know what it is. But they'll say, why when I'm around them, like something about them Amen. is different. Yeah. Like they don't curse like everybody else. <laughs> I don't see them losing their temper like everybody else. When I go to my workplace, everybody looks like they're miserable to be here. But when they walk in, it's like the atmosphere changes. This is what following Jesus is all about. When he is in a room, something's different. Yes. Amen. Here's the biblical principle. Saul, you attract people not to yourself. You attract people to God. Light. You're pointing people to God. Table discussion. Who are you most likely to influence 
to follow Jesus. See how it's, it's pointing question. Who's God calling you to influence this week for Jesus? It could be your mom. It could be your dad. It can be whomever. It's, watch this. It starts, I call it, low-hanging fruit. Some of us are trying to climb trees, but we're skipping the fruit that God has put right in front of us. Amen. It could be a family member. How many know it's the hardest thing to reach family members? Amen. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Jesus had a hard time reaching his brothers and his family. He went to a whole other town. It's hard. But these are the ones that God has called us to reach. We saw and we are light. So we would then table talk. Hey, who are you most likely to influence to follow Jesus? And you're making note of it. And then watch the second one. Pray together. Amen. All right. So I just had an opportunity of praying with an individual just a moment ago that their relative will come back to follow Jesus. You don't think that's powerful? This is what we should be doing. This is our life. We're all about the kingdom business. Amen? Amen. All right. Next page, page 15. Attribute number five. This also gives, glad you put that up there, I appreciate it. It gives some resources. So, in this book, okay, this is the book that Pastor Ron's going to be going through. All this is, this is an overview of this. This is an overview of this. They may not going to have this yet. They're going to have this. But we're leading them to this. Because this has resources. Okay, and so part of helping people to learn is pointing them to resources. So learning to follow Jesus. So when it says discover your style, okay, it's meaning when you're sharing Jesus with someone, what's the style you use? In this book, it goes over different styles of evangelism. I never knew that. It's good to know. I am not a confrontational guy. So my style is not confrontation. My, my, um, the gift that God has given me, I'm more relational. I don't know. I just feel good at listening. So when I'm sharing my faith, I listen more than I talk. Who did that? Jesus. You remember the woman at the well? She gave up all the goods. And she was like, oh my goodness, I did not know that. Wonderful. What about your husband? Oh, I, I, uh, no, 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 the man that you're with, that's not your husband. And them past four dudes? Oh my goodness, I can see that you're a prophet. And Jesus said, let's cut to the chase. The water I give you will become in you a, a spring of living water welling up inside of you so you don't have to come here and keep drinking water. She goes, I want some of that water. He goes, wait, but you got to go call your husband. Yeah. Because if you're going to taste the water that I have for you, you got to be willing to give up that nasty stuff because the stuff I got, you can't compete with. She's like, give me some of this water. The Bible says she went and shared the, her testimony and went her whole town to Jesus. And he said, now that we see Jesus, we no longer believe because of your testimony, but we taste and see ourselves that he is good. Amen. So again, learning your different style, learning your style. Here's another resource. Come to church. That's a wonderful resource. Next, next slide. Attribute number five, learning to love God and others. Matthew chapter 5, 43 to 45 you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be sons 
of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. What did you notice about that? Love your enemies. Oh, gosh. It's a, watch it. It's kingdom. It's, king, it's the kingdom of God. This, you're like, oh, but it's hard. Yeah, it's hard because we're not used to operating in the kingdom principles. This is why learning to follow Jesus is not loving people who love you. It's loving those who don't love you. Well, man, Jesus, this is tough. It is tough. But the more you're with Jesus, the more you become like him. Amen. The more you're with him. Listen to me. You become the people that you roll with. Yes. That's why the scripture is clear. Bad company corrupts what? Good morals, good judgment, good character. But that's why we want to spend time with Jesus. Jesus, our model for learning to love. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave. John 13, 34 through 35, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another by this, not by your preaching, not by your witnessing, not by your laying on of hands, not by you praying in the spirit, not by you speaking in other tongues, not by how much you give in the offering, not by how good deeds you've done. No, 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 it doesn't say that. By this, by the way you love, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And then here's Jesus. Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, in the same chapter, what did Jesus do? He took the role, not of a king, but the role of a servant. The reason why he was able to take the role of a servant, because he already knew he was king. Amen. He had nothing to prove. Amen. When you know who you are, you know who called you, you know where you're going, you've got nothing to prove to nobody. That's why you can scoot down to the lowest of the lowest of the lowest of the lowest, because when God calls you, can nobody change that? Amen. Jesus was awesome because he, was, he knew who he was. Yes. As followers of Jesus, if we know who we are, we will go to people who he's called us to serve, regardless on our status on this planet Earth. Amen. It's about who we are in Christ. Yes. And our prayer is that everybody would know him. Everybody. Okay. Luke 23, 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Okay, but you're like, you're like, nah, Pastor, that, that's all good. He, Jesus, he got to forgive them. What about Stephen? Stephen was the first martyr. And what did Stephen say while they were stoning him? Father, forgive them. <laughs> For they do not know what they are doing. And he divided up his clothes by casting lots. Table discussion. How can Jesus' love for you help you love others? And the second question is, who do you need to love and pray for? I don't want to skip over this. So we're going to discuss this right now. How can Jesus' love for you help you love others? And who do you need to love and pray for today? Process? I'll give you three minutes. Come on, let's talk.
All right, we took about three minutes. Three minutes, awesome. I love it. That just tells me you got a lot of people to love on. Got a lot of people to pray for. I know. Come on. Hey, that's awesome. So the question, how can Jesus' love for you help you to love others? So I'm praying that his love will permeate in you that it may flow through you. That, that's, that's, the, that, that's the goal, man. I'm telling you, I'm not the person I used to be. I'm telling you that. I, I, I am fully aware, fully aware of that. But it's only because of Jesus. It's only because of him. Session number four. Oh, let's, let's go to the, thank you so much. So here's another resource. It's already built in, already built in the PowerPoint. Here's another resource. Learning to follow Jesus, okay? So on pages 234 to 243, now remember, when Pastor Ron kicks this off in January, I just want, just, I always got to bring it back here because it's so new. People are going to be getting the book, okay? It's fine. Don't, don't go, Pastor, they don't deserve that book. They didn't get this book yet, though. Pastor, give them the book. <laughs> give them three books. Give them 15 books. It, there's no rule. There's no rule, okay? There's, okay, let's just, okay, no, no, there's no rule. If they get this one before this one, who cares? If they get this and don't have this, who cares? But in January, he's going to be encouraging everybody to get the book. Like he's already been doing, okay? In this book of resources, so page 234 to 243, it actually helps people to learn how to love. That's why I love this book. It's different than any other book. It's not just stories. It's, there's principles in here. There's scripture in here. There's application in here, okay? And then I just put on there, McGee, Robert, uh, the search for significance is another just added bonus resource that they can look up on their own, okay? They're teaching people how to be students of God's word. Okay, upcoming events and information. See, we got one more week. Hey, one more. Now, re now listen, don't say that too much. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the way you just said that just now. I was like, yeah, yeah, no. No. Yeah, bringing a whole new crop. All right, yeah, all right. I got you. I, you felt that. I felt something over there. Uh, we got one more week of class. Now, remember, you, we just did four weeks or three weeks. So you're like, this is long. Listen, you did the whole thing. It's going to be one week at a time, so it's not going to be long. It's going to be short. But you, we did it all in this conference, okay? So we got one more week. Hey, first steps, uh, read first steps, pages 24 through 31. When they read that, obviously it's going to take them to the end of the book. For some people, this will be the only book they've ever gotten through spiritually. We celebrate that. Amen. Great job. That's awesome. Okay? Water baptism, February 15th, right? Bridge groups, we're always pointing same information. Hey, don't remember. Circle in the calendar. It's going to be a lot of fun. Focus seminar, February 18th, right? This is going to help. Oh, Something about something that somebody said earlier. I think it was you, Pastor Ron. Could have been something you said. Okay. When people, the first steps class, okay, and what we're doing, we're helping to assimilate people to Jesus and to his church. So many times you're like, all right, all right, what's next? What's next? What's next? And we're like this entertainment center. What's next is that they become followers of Jesus so they can help somebody else. Amen. We can't just be mooching, mooching programs, mooching ministry, mooching, mooching, mooching. No, it's time for us so that 
Why is serving important? Because you're never more like Jesus than when you're giving and serving. That's why we do it. So as you're serving, you're getting stronger spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally. Listen, when you're serving someone, it's the best thing ever. You know why? Because you're not thinking about yourself. The more I, I'm serious, the more I think about myself, the more miserable I become. Amen. The more I serve someone, yes. the more I become like Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to be more like Jesus, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Remember when Jesus was uh, feeding the 5,000? And uh, uh, this was so funny, man. He's, he's about to, you know, feed them or whatever. Jesus is like, because I, I, I can imagine myself being one of the disciples, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm just from Brooklyn. So they've been like, Jesus like, hey, listen. See all these people? Well, yeah, I see them. <laughs> Feed them. <laughs> My mind starts going, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest with you. I'm, 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 like, I'm like, Jesus, you're, you're, you're tripping right now. You, like, maybe you had a bad day. Maybe. The first question, where are we going to get this food? Yes. Second question. How are we going to do it? Third question. I got to do it? <laughs> questions. That's all. Just questions. Just questions. Jesus said, no, no. The disciples were like, I got it. Send them away. <laughs> it's in, no, that's in the Bible. <laughs> Jesus, let me make this easy for you. Yes. If we send them home now, it's still light outside. They hit the local bodega, we're good. We're good. Jesus goes, mm -mm, they're going to fall down on the way home. You feed them. And here's, here, here's this little boy. Peter's, it was Andrew. Andrew's like, yo, we got this little boy's lunch. Uh, how, <laughs> I think they were like joking, like, ha, 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 And Jesus is like, got to do it. Amen. Hand it out. Amen. Jesus did the miracle, but the disciples fed them. Yes. Yes. That tells me that Jesus wants us to be a part of the miracle. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. It is. So this Thanksgiving dinner? Y'all gonna go. <laughs> Pastor Ron bugging. <laughs> Our leader is bugging. When he said bring it to the hotel, that was actually a really good idea. Why can't we bring it to the hotel? Simple. Strategic. Amen. His house. Amen. Come on. Amen. His house. Amen. Should be a house Amen. where there's unlimited resources. Amen. Sorry, Pastor Ron. <laughs> it's powerful though. This Jesus is awesome. So don't get mad at Pastor Ron. You get angry at Jesus. He told us to feed them. All right, here we go. Next week. Week number four. We're at the end. The table discussion again. Hey, we're going to be connecting again. We're going to review uh, of, the, of the seven attributes. We're going to overview the last two of praying and managing. Praying and managing. Then we're going to provide some application. So see how the classes are just very... Very, very clean, same exact way, keeps it consistent. Okay. Again, table discussion. Always start with a discussion. How was your time this past week? Table coaches, make sure you engage. Describe one way you have changed. See that? Since you started following Jesus. Get people to see change. Because the enemy's been beating them up all week. You're this, you're nothing, you're that, you're this, you're this, you're this. And when they highlight an area that they, we make a big deal over that. Attribute number six, learning to pray. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. And again, remember, Pastor Ron's going to be preaching a whole thing on prayer. 
as part of an attribute. So this is gonna be great. Because remember, at large group, they can't ask questions. Small group, they can. Matthew 6, 6, 9 through 13. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. How to learn to pray. I love this model because it comes from Jesus. Three R's that we recognize here is relationship. Our Father. When Jesus rose from the grave, he said to Mary Magdalene, he said, I am going to not just my father, but now your father. That through Jesus, he has now given us a living relationship with his father. Now he's our father. Amen. Watch, our father. Third, second R is respect. We honor his name. That when we pray, we spend time honoring him and glorifying him. And you are holy and you are worthy. And <sighs> Reign. God, let your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom is power. Your kingdom rule. You reign. Yes. Then you have the three F's of prayer. No one ever taught me how to pray. In this class, they're going to learn how to pray. Amen. Food. Give us our daily bread. Our needs. Lord, provide for our needs. God cares about our needs. Why does it say daily? I just wish sometimes with God, he would go, I'm going to provide right now for the rest of your days. You know the problem with that? I won't go back to him. He wants me to rely on him every day. Every day. Second F is forgiveness. Lord, forgive us. For we have sinned against you. There should be a time in our prayer time where we say, Lord, search me, O God. Yes. Renew a right spirit in me, O God. Lord, is there any area? And this is what we do in prayer. We allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate his light on our life. Oh, God, I knew I shouldn't have spoke to that person that way. Lord, I'm treating my spouse this way. That's not right. I shouldn't have kicked the dog yesterday. I got to go back and apologize for that. <laughs> but it's a time of searching. It's a time of saying, God, search me. It's good to allow those that follow Jesus to learn that they are to not just talk to God, but wait on God. Be quiet before God. Freedom. This is my daily prayer. Lord, deliver me from the evil one. Amen. Deliver me from him. Yes. Deliver me from his schemes and his, 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 his accusations and his ways yes. and then condemnation thoughts. God, those are not your thoughts. What I love about the Holy Spirit is that he's the voice of truth. Amen. And anything that is not of truth, I know it's not of God. Amen. So teaching those that follow Jesus the difference between the lie yes. and truth. Yes. We listen to lies too often. Yes. Hey. We table discussion. Which aspect of prayer stands out to you the most and why? Okay? That, that's another table talk time. Right? It's saying, God, which aspect of prayer stands out to you the most and why? Is it the relationship, our Father, respect, Rain, food, forgiveness, or freedom. All right, here's what I want to do with you, okay? 
coaching. Here's what I want to do with you. I want you to put everything down. Put your pens down. Put your papers down. This helps me a lot. So before I go into the throne room of grace, I have to remind myself that I'm going before the throne room of grace. I can't rush into his presence. So I'm acknowledging, I'm, listen to me, it's something I do because I know myself. So I have to slow down, not use these mumbo jumbo words, and I always take a deep breath before the presence of God. I take my hands, I place them to my side. I say, God, I need your presence. And I tell myself, but I know it's the Lord speaking to me, you are my father. And I don't move until I feel that spirit break. I go, God, you're my father. And I tell myself, Jamel, you're before his throne. And I don't move until I come into agreement with my mind, body, and spirit. I need everybody there. And I'll just wait. God, you're my father. And I was saying, I say this. God, you are God. I am not. And you're listening to me right now. And my prayers are coming before your throne. What happens during this time is that anxiety and the enemy of distraction is trying to get you. So you got to quiet your spirit. Shut everything down and off and wait. Don't move until you can see yourself around his throne. You wait. When you know that you are around his throne, something will begin to happen in your inner spirit and it's called the awe of God. And out of the awe of God, what will blurt out is not your needs or wants. It is simply worship. Hallowed be thy name. You are holy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. See why you got to get up in the morning before everything else? See why you can't be having distractions or the kids talking to you or the TV on and all these things? Because you got to say, God, I'm around your throne. The throne room of grace. And here's what I'm doing in this time. I'm allowing heaven to touch me. Touch me, oh God. God, thy kingdom come. God, your will be done in my life today, Lord. God, I don't see the situations I'm going to get into today. I don't see the conversations, Lord, but you see me and you know me. What I'm doing right now is I'm waiting for the peace of God to settle my spirit. And what I'm actually doing is working my way strategically through the Lord's prayer. And then when I, it's, it's, um, it's very powerful because when you get into that intimate time of prayer, you'll actually sense the Holy Spirit taking you by the hand, walking you into different rooms. And he will let me know when I'm in a room of supplication. He'll let me know. Because there's, a, there, am, I, am I talking to a church? I sense his, I sense his, his um, there's a, uh, when I, when, there's usually a prompting. A prompting, like, so like a teleprompter. Like, so like most people, like the President of the United States, he don't just go off the cuff. <laughs> he's reading a teleprompter. And as he's reading a teleprompter, he's reading exactly what it says. Do you know? That we have a teleprompter in heaven. Amen. That's how we begin to learn how to pray in God's will. Yes. So I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to take me through those rooms. So I say, okay, Lord, what room I am? 
Oh, Lord, forgiveness. I humble myself again, Lord, wash me. Purify. And then I don't hear condemnation. Mm -mm. He's washing me. Amen. Purifying me. So what? When I get up from that, my prayer, I, I don't feel the condemnation no more. I've been washed. I don't bring it up again. Why would I bring up something that's already been forgiven? So we got to take our time. So listen what we're doing. We're leading people through what this looks like. Because most people won't know. But watch, it will only happen as an, out of an overflow of your life. Amen. All right. Next one. Learn to manage. We keep the best one for last. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hmm. What do you notice about managing in this verse? Storing? Yeah. I didn't know that I can have treasure in heaven. I didn't know that. Name for me two things. Two things. That we get to take to heaven with us. Two. Our souls. Souls. Come on, somebody. That's part of it. <laughs> Souls, which are people. And it said his word. Okay. If the only thing that will last forever is his word and souls, why do I waste so much time energy, money, resources on things that won't last. You know what that comes to? I'm a foolish man. What profit a man if he gains this whole world, but yet forfeit his very self. So as followers of Jesus, we can't skip over manage. Observations. Do not store up for yourself treasure on earth. Okay. When you die, I didn't say if. <laughs> when. When you die, you can't take nothing with you. Not your clothes. Not your job. You're like, praise God. <laughs> think, think about that. Somebody else is going to spend your money. Did you know that? And they're going to go like this. We loved him. We loved him. Loved him so much. They're going to spin your stuff. They're going to take your home. They're going to get your keys to your car. They, you can't take nothing with you. The only thing, God, what did I do with your word? And how did I impact lives? Okay, if that is it, ICC, 
Can we spend our time impacting souls? Spending time around his word. What kinds of things can moths eat, rush, destroy, and be stolen by thieves? Hey, thing. <laughs> Number two. But do store up for yourself treasures in heaven. What kinds of things can moths not eat, rust not destroy, and thieves not steal, according to scripture? My treasure in heaven. Treasures on earth? Absolutely. Not my treasures in heaven. It is kept in a secret place. And it says, question, what does this verse say about your heart? I didn't know that. I didn't know that there is an imaginary string right now from your heart to your pocket. I didn't know that. I didn't know that God, there's a direct correlation from your, see God's calling, from your, from your heart to your pocket. All right, let me, let me share with this with you, okay? Because when you learn this principle, life gets simple. Simple. Okay. Remember the same prompting? What's the prompting? The prompting? Oh, Lord, what room am I in? See how the Lord is working. What, <laughs> God, what room, what room, I, what room am I in? Oh, Lord, I'm in the bread room. Oh, Lord. And then there's going to come a moment where God's going to go, open up your eyes. You're going to go, okay. Now you got to deal with people. You're like, oh, man, I like it better with you. And the guy's like, you, you act, let's, this happens. The same prompting will go, give it away. You're like, devil, get <laughs> Devil, you know I got bills. Stop it. But, but, but if God said, I got, I got something for you, like, yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, that's for me. Then why is it God then? God, the same God that says it's for you, is the same God that says give it away. Amen. Obedience. So here's how I always, come on, I got to check myself. If I have a hard time giving it away, maybe it's because it has a hold of me. All right, so this is the stuff that goes on inside of me, by the way. So, so, so I, get, I get to a church last week, right? I'm closing out. I get to a church last week. So I'm the evangelist, you know? But like everybody's not like Pastor Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Ron does such a great job. That's all I'm like, I told my wife, I was like, my, my wife goes, all right, babe. Oh, you, look at you smiling going out the door. I said, I am, because I'm going home. Like, I, I, like I love, like, whatever. So, <laughs> so I, go to, I go to another place. I go to places. <laughs> and I already know, I already know, okay, Lord, it's going to be a rough week. <laughs> but God, I'm trusting you, oh God. So I get in the door, and it's going to be a rough one. I know it's going to be a rough one. I go, oh, Lord, it's okay. You're my supplier. You're my daughter. Oh, it's okay, because I'm going to ICC next week. So, God, you're going to make it up. You're going to make it up. Oh, Lord, you're good. I step out of the car, and God says, give it away. I go, give it away. Give it away. I go, God. God, no way. Give it away. I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Okay, here it is. Put it into practice. Give it away. But it ain't even going to match what they give me. I'm like, 
said, oh, Lord, I'm in a deficit. <laughs> God's like, I said, give it away. I'm like, you know what? Oh, the prompting. There was a young girl. They're doing Speed the Light. And uh, it's a pastor's daughter. And she said, uh, she had a little thing, a little paper. And she was holding up a paper. I said, what'd that paper say? I shouldn't have asked the question. <laughs> she goes, the Lord put it on my heart. She's like 10. The Lord put on my heart that I'm going to raise $500 and $1,500 we got to raise for our youth group. Amen. And the Lord, I mean, I'm, I'm like trying to compute. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord said, give it away. <laughs> so I go, I go, oh Lord, you better be right. <laughs> you better be right. I said, sweetheart, God just spoke to me. I had to process through, you know, as I'm talking. I said, God just spoke to me. She said, he did. I said, yeah, he told me to tell you. I'm trying to wait for like the interception. He told me to tell you, don't worry about raising the rest. Cause we're gonna give that $500 for my ministry, right? And I totally did not tell, I usually tell my wife, like, honey, we're down 500. I didn't even get you. I said, so I said, okay. Her mom is in the back weeping. I go, and I'm fanning the mother like this, stop it. She goes, you don't know what God did in my daughter's heart this past weekend. Listen to me. I'm starting to understand this stuff now. Amen. It ain't about the money. No, no. It's about the heart. Amen, amen, amen. 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 If you would just respond to the nudge, amen. he will entrust you with more. Yes. Isn't that awesome? Some of y'all are like, yeah, Pastor, I'm glad he do that with you. <laughs> Share stories of when God came through for you because it needs to take off the edge on talking about resources. Part of following Jesus is we got to learn how to manage when he says give it away. Amen. All right, next slide. What impact could these verses have on how you manage money. Watch this. Next slide, please. We would then do a group work with these verses. Okay? Watch. So, how can the following passages help us learn to manage? Okay? So, Philippians 4, 4 through 9, we have to understand that managing is not just about money. The mind. The mind. Matthew 6, 19 through 33 and Malachi 3, 10. We're called to manage our finances. But look in Deuteronomy, Luke, and 1 Timothy. And again, remember, if we have more time, we're going through these verses. I'm going to manage my body. A temple. Yes. Words. That's a hard one. Do you know that in scripture we're going to be accountable for every word we speak? That's scary. That's just, you know. Makes me think about how I speak to people. How I use my words. I'm called to manage my words. I'm to lift up, not to tear down. Five, Genesis 2, 2, and 3, Psalm 90, 12. My time. Managing my time. God wants to use me, but if I'm too busy, because I don't know how to manage my calendar. 
time. Six gifts. God, you want to use my gifts. Scripture in the book of Corinthians, and we're going to be talking about that in the Focus Seminar, on how God wants to use my gifts. In order for God to use my gifts, i got to first understand what are my gifts. How do I go about finding out my gifts? In the Focus Seminar, that's what we're going to be doing. We're finding out our gifts so that we can use our gifts. But we need to manage our time well. Amen? Table discussion. In what area would you like to make progress with regards to managing? Right? To managing. So one of the things I love about being a born-again, spirit-filled follower of Jesus, he taught me how to manage. Okay. Do you know why I love tithing? You know why I love it? Because it organizes my resources. Do you understand that when you tithe, when you tithe, you're actually telling God, God, you own the whole thing. Amen. We already know this. God doesn't need our resources. Amen. But when we tithe, we take 10%. Why is 10? 10, that portion actually represents the whole. So when you give the 10, what you're saying is saying, God, not only does the 10 belong to you, but you own the whole honey. Amen. It's yours. It's yours. It belongs to you. And so watch this. Every single week, I get to tell my money, you don't own me, dog. You don't own me. So that spirit that's on it, don't jump on me. No. I use you. You don't use me. Amen. Amen. There's a spirit on there. So every single week, when I get paid, I kick that spirit. Yes. It belongs to you, Lord. Everything belongs to you. You can nudge me whenever you want. You can tell me what to do. You can tell me where to go. But, Lord, I just want to be a good steward of what you give. If I'm not a good steward of earthly resources, why in the world would he entrust me with kingdom resources? So I want to be a better steward. So we would then talk about that progress, all right? I know it's 12 o'clock on the dot. Pastor Ron, he gave me a, 10 minutes to preach last night. And I'm telling you, come on, we landed that plane. Not yet, Pastor Ron. Look at him getting up there. I'm landing. I'm landing the plane. I'm landing it. Again, take a moment. Encourage, man, you, we made it through. Great job, everybody. But don't let them leave that class without making sure they're in the bridge group. Amen. We can't drop the ball. We can't let them go and go, oh, that was awesome. All right, I guess there's nothing else here. No, we want to get them connected to a bridge group. See the second one? Hey, these spiritual coaches that have been here these past four weeks, you know what we do? If you're interested, hey, hey, hey. We want to walk you through for the next eight weeks and help you grow in your relationship with God. Same attribute, but we go deeper. Amen. And I want to point your attention to our focus seminar again. And again, Pastor Ron and the leaders, we can totally add to this. We can change it. We can... But we just wanted to give just a baseline of where we would like to see people go. Amen. Right? Because if God is entrusting them to us, then we got to make sure that we're, we're saying, Lord, we'll do whatever it takes to make disciples. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor Ron. Amen. Yeah, so when Jamal goes to one of those churches that don't treat him well, who's his next call? <laughs>